almost want to applaud, don't you? What a great song to start with, The Lily of the Valley. Well, it's great to see all of you this morning, and uh, it's great to be back after a couple weeks' holidays. I always want to start those Sundays when you come back with thanks to everybody that held the ship together and made all the things work, and uh, there's a lot of moving parts around here on a Sunday morning, as you all know, I'm sure, and uh, so thanks for making that all work. Um, uh, a few of us are experiencing the... Uh, uh, the absence of our sound guy Terry this morning, uh, but we got all that fixed up. It's it's an interesting way that Terry leaves things, though. You know how meticulous he is about just about everything. He said, "Really, all you got to do is turn the thing on. You can leave it covered up." Uh, he had it all set, ready to go. We just plugged in and played. So so, but thanks to everybody that made it all work. I heard good things uh, about uh, the the two the two officers, sets of officers that uh, were here. So that's that's great. Um, uh, sometimes, sometimes when you have other officers come, we can select those people carefully. I want you to know that uh, you you have troubles when you come back because you know you just never know. You just never know. No, that's the, and I, I'm not going to go any farther down that road. I've been practicing not to speak anything Newfoundland this morning, so I've been standing in front of the mirror saying "boy," not "by," and "George." not Jarge. Um, and I don't use those words in the same sentence because it sounds like Jarge by, right? So I don't, don't do that. Trying real hard. Anyway, it was a great couple of weeks. We stayed with a, a couple of sets of our friends, the Pilgrims and the Bungays. We're still friends. I said to somebody, we're still friends, so that's a good sign. Um, great to be back. There's a few things, just a couple things to talk about. Uh, there's a few people away this morning. Be in prayer for, for Shirley. She's, uh, she's, she's just she got her shot yesterday and another shot for, you know, the doc. When you go to the doc, they want to give you a lot of things. Pray for Shirley. She's feeling a little under the weather from the medicine that you have to take these days. Um, also, uh, we want you to pray for Sue's aunt's family uh, while we're away. Aunt Lil, if anybody you know Aunt Lil, she's everybody's aunt in the whole world. A aunt Lil Utman from, from Burlington passed uh, in her 102nd year. Um, but pray for the family. They're all uh, coming from hither and yon to, uh, to, uh, to gather for the funeral next Saturday. So pray for uh, Lil Utman's family. Uh, there have been rumors of uh, a church barbecue thing, which I know somebody had said the end of this month, we're going to do it Labor Day weekend, I think Labor Day Sunday. And I know a few folks might be traveling that day, but uh, we're going to try and have some hamburgers and hot dogs. We've heard that there's a new barbecue in the building that needs to be put together, and so we're going to recruit a couple of people to do that. It's back in the other room. The ADS have, uh, have bought it, and it's all, it's all together. It's all together. Oh, imagine that. That's great. So anyway, we're just, we're just playing around with the idea. We just want to do something low-key, low-key, no, nothing high-key, all right, because I can't sing in a high-key, so nothing, nothing high-key. Speaking of higher keys, uh, we're going to sing. Uh, this morning, we're going to start with the songs Trust and Obey. The band's going to help us out. Uh, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, the song says, what a glory he sheds on our way. So he lights the path. Uh, while we do his goodwill, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. And the chorus says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. We're going to talk about that this morning, uh, then to trust and obey. So if you will, stand and we'll sing this first song together. We walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, 
But his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey. but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our, do- our, toil, um, our toil he doth richly repay. Don't you like King James language? I still love it, actually. Not a grief, nor a loss, a frown, a cross. All is blessed if we trust and obey. There's two more verses, I believe, to this song. We'll sing them both, uh, verses 3 and 4. Not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey. delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for all who will trust For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. As he was waiting for my favorite verse to come up, and here it is, Then in fellowship we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way uh, where our call is to heaven. What he says he'll do, where he sends we'll go. Never fear, only trust and obey. This is the last verse. We'll sing it together with the pants. Fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says he will do, where he sends we will go. Please be seated. Talking about light this morning a little bit and thinking about the light, dark contrast uh, as we uh, consider uh, God's word today. And I grabbed this song um, and uh, thought we should sing it this morning. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, you're my God. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Uh, We're going to look at that scripture this morning. So uh, let's lift this song up together. I'll put it in, yeah, it's, I'll put it in, yeah, I'm sorry, Roger. (laughs) 
Step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you So here I am to worship I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me So highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship. You're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Huh. I'm not even gonna, not even gonna, this is being taped, you know. That's only happened twice in my life. And this is the second time. <laughs> Let's sing the chorus again. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. All together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know, and I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. All together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Let's pray together. Father, today we're in your presence. And in your presence, there is comfort. In your presence, there is healing. In your presence, in your presence, there is peace. And we claim all those things today, Lord, as we gather, because we need them. Our, our, our life, our world hands us all kinds of challenges, and so we face them, but we don't face them alone. So today, here in your presence, in the fellowship of brothers and sisters, 
And in the power of your Holy Spirit, we just place ourselves before you and say, here I am, just as I am, to worship you. Father, will you be with those who we've mentioned already this morning? People and families who need a, a close encounter with you. Pray for Shirley this morning. Pray for Joyce Utman and her family. And others, Lord, that are in our hearts. People who we know just need to know that you are there, carrying them, lifting them up, holding them in your hand, and us as we gather to worship. Strengthen us and equip us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. We did up a... Um just a chart in the office that kind of, because you know, you can't actually just sing songs anymore. Did you know that? You can't just sing songs. You have to uh, record when you sing them. Uh, and all this happens in the background. Aren't you glad? Uh, you have to record when you sing them and how many times you sing them so that, uh, because copyrights. So here's a little secret. Don't tell anybody I told you. But down at the bottom of the last slide on everything we do here it has to have the little copyright number that we pay a fee so we can sing these songs. Isn't, that, isn't the world we live in interesting? Never used to be that way. Remember, you could just... So anyway, what am I saying? That um, this song that we're going to sing now has uh, been sung a few times. And we, we made it a song of the month. We're going to kick that into gear again in September, October. We're going to kind of try and learn a new song each month if we can. And that just keeps uh, Roger and I on our toes. That's really all that's about. It's not to frustrate you, really. But this song, uh, and I, I love the background. Uh, if you've been spending any time around eagles lately, like I have, um, this, the background is amazing, right? But So I always appreciate the picture in the background I suppose but strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord this is this is directly from that passage in Isaiah that says they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall walk and not faint they shall run and not be weary uh, those that wait upon the Lord so let's sing this song and uh, there's probably a spot where you can clap on the chorus I don't know but uh, let's just let this you know this well so you can just sit back close your eyes and sing I'm pretty sure here we go As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer, you are. God, the everlasting God, you do not think you won't grow in you're the defender of the weak, you come for those in need, you lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait 
upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not think you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You do not think you won't like God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong believer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not think you won't go. us up on wings like eagle Amen. Amen. Grab your Bible if you brought it whatever form you brought it in, and uh, let's turn to 1 John. So if you're looking at 1 John, uh, you're getting real close to the back of the Bible. Uh, right tucked in just before the uh, book of Revelation. And, you know, um, it's interesting. I hope you, I'm sure you know this because you've been around for a long time reading the Bible, I'm sure, for many of you. But, uh, but uh, the Bible's laid out in an interesting fashion. And I've, I've got this system that I use for Bible reading. And I read from the various sections. And so this happens to be the apostolic letters. Okay, that's just a big term to tell us that the apostles wrote books, and this is one of the ones that, uh, that the apostle John wrote. Now, I know what the screen says, but we're going to take a look at the first verse and the first chapter. So chapter 1, 1 John, reading from verse 1 down a little bit until I think we should stop, which is probably a little bit into chapter 2, just because of how it's laid out. So here's what they have to say, the, uh, the apostle John, and it appears to be speaking as a group. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen, and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy, and some translations say our joy, may be full. Verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, 
We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, also for the whole world. Let's pray. Father, we hold your word in our hands and in our hearts. Will you speak to us from your word today, this morning, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, we've, um, we've talked about light before. We've talked about it. In fact, uh, when I was looking at my notes last, uh, last summer or early fall, uh, we spent some time uh, looking at how Peter uh, spoke of light uh, in his epistle. And that was, that was good. Uh, this morning, though, I, I want us to kind of contrast light and darkness a little bit. And I don't know when the last time was that you were in the dark, I mean physically in the dark. Uh, the lights went out and uh, you were there trying to figure out whatever you could. Do you remember that time? I want you to f just, just try and clock that. It doesn't happen often, surprisingly, in Ontario, in Canada, in North America, really. It doesn't happen often. And I'm you know, good with that. Uh, nothing worse than being in the dark. Um, but think back to the last time it happened. And if you're anything like me, and I think I might have said this before, the lights go out in your house, the power goes off, and sometime during that time, you go to a light switch, and you flip it on, and you wonder for just that split second why there's no lights. Right? We, we, lean, we lean on the light. We do all the time. Um, we've, just, uh, we've just taken a little air flight, as you know. And when I go away, I've got this little flashlight. And we won't talk about flashlights. We've talked about this before. I have a bit of a thing about flashlights, right? But I've got this one that I carry in my briefcase or my backpack when I go. And it's this little, uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a cop light. I'm sorry. It's kind of, it's really super bright, but it's a little steel thing. You can't destroy this thing. You could throw it. I'm sure you could run over it with your car. It would still work. But it's this tube of steel, and the light is built into it. Now, if you leave that buried down in your briefcase, you can guarantee pretty much without, without a doubt, if you go through airport security, you're going to secondary. Every time it's happened. So I don't do that anymore. I've learned that that little piece of steel, that little flashlight, I pull it out, and if I've got my iPad or my computer, I put it in the, in the little tray where everything else that you own is there, right? Your belt, your shoes, every, your watch, like everything goes in the tray, and I always make sure that the light is there because if they can see it, they don't have to pull me off over and dig into the bag and, oh, yeah, it's a flashlight. <laughs> it works. But more times than enough, it comes through this x-ray scan and the, the guy's getting it and fly, flicking it. I watch very carefully because I want to make sure they're not going to put it in their pocket because I really like that flashlight. The difference between light and darkness, right? The last time things went dark for you, I don't know when it was, but if you remember, it's not a pleasant, it's not a pleasant feeling. I don't know how many times, I don't know if you, which version you read from, but in this particular version, the New King James that I was reading from, the Apostle John makes a declaration. In fact, if you look at it, depending on which translation you're reading, he actually says the word, I declare something, three or four times, depending on which translation you're reading. Certainly in those first verses, he talks about, we say this and we declare it to you. Declarations are kind of like, I don't know, what are they kind of like sermons, I suppose, but I'm making this declaration to you. We've kind of gotten used to declarations, haven't we? Through the last couple of years, there's been, you know, states of emergency declared. While we were away, there was a state of emergency declared in the province that we were in. Uh, thanks to those of you who prayed for us and one or two called to see if we were okay. We weren't, uh, we weren't in the central part, but 
it was a declaration of emergency. Uh, people had their get ready and go bags already at their door because the fire was going and if it swept in close, they had to get out of there. Declarations. Well, the Apostle John makes this declaration and it's a declaration about who Jesus was. However, in these verses that we're going to consider this morning, verses 5 and following, he makes this declaration. I want to read it to you so I don't mix the words up. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you. Now, when somebody makes a declaration, what does that mean? I looked it up. It means you pay attention. So the Apostle John is writing these words, and he says, I make this declaration to you. It was to get their attention. It's kind of like say, hey, listen up. I need you to hear this. And what he needs to hear is the summary of everything that he said in verses 1 to 4. So you can look that up this afternoon. But here's the summary of everything he said in verses 1 to 4. Pretty simple. Three words. God is light. God is light. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, you know, I thought maybe to contrast it, because it's, it's, a, it's a big question. What does it mean God is light? What does it mean? There's an interesting picture. There's light shining through a prism, separated into its three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Interesting. Okay, salvationists. Primary colors. There it is. And there's light divided into its parts. It looks white on the other side, but you separate it, it's divided into its parts. What does it mean that God is light? Well, let's think about darkness for a minute. Now, if you want to stay home next week, <laughs> we're going to talk about sin. And on purpose, I'm going to kind of hang that one up this morning. Just, just for the sake of holding off till next week, because I really want to focus on what does sin mean? We don't talk about it much in the church. Isn't that surprising? But we want to talk about it. We want to unpack that a little bit next week. But I thought about darkness, and what does it mean in your world and my world? Because the, the Apostle John just said, God is light. Well, for me to figure out light, I need to figure out darkness. Now here's one thing I know about light and darkness. That there's darkness all over the place. If you look anywhere underneath things, now we got the lights on and they're good and bright, but there's darkness in the room, right? Underneath, when, you, when it talks about light and darkness, we push back the darkness. That's what happens when I turn my flashlight on. I don't eliminate darkness, it's there. As soon as I turn the flashlight off, it's dark again. But when we turn on the light, it pushes back the darkness. I want you to think about that for a minute. But let's think about how darkness comes on us in our world. I wrote a few things down, as you'd be surprised that I would, but I wrote down the first one I wrote down. I don't know if it means it's the, the most uh, experienced one, but chaos and confusion. Chaos and confusion. That can get kind of dark, right? If you don't handle chaos in your life and in our world, it can become confusing right away, quite quickly. How about anxiety? If you don't handle anxiety in your life, it can become a rather unmanageable thing and things can get kind of dark. How about depression and despondency? I know I'm dealing in the, the psychological here for a moment, and maybe we, uh, but we'll talk about the spiritual in a moment. But, but if you don't deal with those things, and those are things that are, are dark if you don't deal with them, and you can find yourself stuck in the darkness and not really don't doing so well. There are things that we have to manage in our lives, in our world, that are rather dark. And I'm saying to you this, I'm saying this to you after a couple of years of us dealing with all of those things. One of the other things that I wrote down was, was isolation and loneliness. We've had to deal with that. And the impact of that isn't over, I don't think. We still have to deal with some of those things that I've just mentioned. And if we don't deal with them, if we don't deal with the darkness that's in our world, we'll find ourselves captured by it and in some trouble in a hurry. So John writes, God is light, 
and in him there is no darkness. So for us to understand the light, perhaps we need to think about what is the darkness that we have to deal with in our world? We'll talk about sin next week because that's obviously where John's mind is. I believe that as we understand our world better, as we understand ourselves better, some of those other things that I've just talked about are very real in our life. Let me be careful to say, though, all of those things that I just mentioned do not equate to sin. You can be dealing with despondency and not be in sin. You can be dealing with chaos and confusion and not be in sin. Let me just be clear about that. Those are real things that we deal with in our real world. But you've got to deal with them because if you don't, you'll find yourself overcome by the darkness. So the declaration, God is light. The darkness that we have to deal with in our world right now, as soon as you step out the door, the things that I've mentioned. But we're faced with this dilemma. If you have too much time on your hands, all of these points start with a D. I don't know. The declaration, the darkness, the dilemma. Let me read to you the dilemma. Because it, it's, it's ours to face every single day of your life. Here's the dilemma, verse 6. Fasten your seatbelt. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, don't throw things at me, we lie and do not practice the truth. There's the dilemma. I've already really outlined it to you because the dilemma that we face is every single day that you breathe, you have to deal with the darkness that is all around you. Not just sin, but all of the other things that I've mentioned every single day. And so what the Apostle John is saying is if we say we are walking in the light, but we are living in the darkness, we lie and are not practicing the truth. That's a hard statement. I don't like even giving it to you because I'm battling with it too. Right? We all want to live a certain way. We all want to look a certain way. It appears that God has this um, interesting little mandate with me the last few weeks in the form of humbling. Humbling. I got my five minutes of fame last Sunday. Did you, did you tune in? I got to sing at CBS Corp. There, were, there are 20,000 people that watch them online. I thought, wow, this is amazing. Wow. They forgot to turn up my guitar. Everything you heard on the guitar was only because the sound guys were able to pick some up. They didn't turn it up. Interesting, humbling. My capo fell off this morning. I had to stop playing because I can't play in the key of E as well as Roger does. Interesting how sometimes God humbles you, isn't it? You see, we all have stuff that we've got to deal with every day. And we all want to look a certain way. And what the Apostle John is saying is, if we say we walk in the light, but we're actually living in the darkness, we lie and we're not practicing the truth. Now, like I said, we're going to talk about sin a little bit next week, but we often want people to think a certain way about us, don't we? So sometimes we walk as though everything is wonderful, but it's not. And there's our dilemma that we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where if you just walk around, your feet are going to get dusty and dirty. If you just engage with people in any way, you're going to hear that they got some issues and so do you. That's the world we live in. And there is the dilemma. You can circle it. It's in verse 6. It says, if we walk if we say we have fellowship with the light, if we say we have fellowship with him, we just said he is light. If we say we have fellowship with him, but we walk in the darkness. When the Bible talks about walking, it talks about camping out in, setting up your camp in. 
So if we say we walk in the light, but we actually have set up camp in the darkness. And what I'm saying by that is you allow those things, those things that I mentioned, to overcome you. Darkness isn't far away. My last point this morning, verse 7, the desired destination. Let me tell you about it. The desired destination in verse 7. But, circle but, it's a contrasting word. Doesn't, we don't have to walk in the darkness, but, he says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with Jesus Christ, his son, and he cleanses us. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. There's where sin comes up, and I don't want you to, to toss it to the side. That's certainly what John had in mind, and the other things that we've mentioned this morning are things that we live in with in the world, and if we don't deal with them, they'll overtake us. They really will. But I want you to unpack that verse with me just for a moment. The desired destination is walking, living, basking, lavishing in the light of God. But I love how he describes it. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. You see, all those things that I mentioned just a few moments ago, all the things that, that we battle with in our world because it's the way it is, all of those things we deal with, at least should deal with, in fellowship. In fellowship. That's together. You see, God has put us together in this particular congregation for a reason. I believe it. I don't believe that any congregation is by mistake. Now, I, I think that there's all, always, you know, change and ebb and flow and people coming and people going. But I believe that, that God has his hand upon churches. I believe it. And I have to live that way and believe that God has put the people here that he needs here. And we walk in fellowship, and we, we deal with the darkness in our world in the fellowship. Now, does that mean that we wear our hearts on our sleeves and we tell everything that ever happens to us? Probably not. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying when we struggle, we struggle together. When we battle the darkness, we battle together. When we need to push the darkness back in our lives for whatever reason, whatever situation might be upon us at that moment, we do it in the fellowship. We do it in the fellowship of believers. If you look at the first few verses that I won't unpack for us this morning, and I, I hope you might do that, read the first few verses of 1 John chapter 1. He talks about being in the fellowship. But I'm saying to you, the fellowship, the fellowship is vital to us dealing with the darkness and staying in the light. We've experienced it, haven't we? We've all been in isolation. Wasn't that great? I believe it's the worst thing that could ever happen to the church. Isolating the group of people that are, are designed by God to be together. The promise is about the destination. If, John says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us, cleanses us from all sin. That's what makes us the fellowship. That's what puts us together. So how are you dealing with darkness? How are you dealing with the things that challenge you every single day? How's that going for you? Is it a battle? Is it a struggle? Are you finding hope? This is the declaration that God is light. In him is no darkness. John could have stopped there. But he added two more words just to make sure we heard it. In him is no darkness at all. Nothing. Nada. Not a hint of darkness do we find in God, your God, my God, the God who helps us to deal with the darkness. Let's pray together.
Sylvia is going to help us with a song as we reflect for a moment. The song is one that you know very well. You'll be able to sing it by memory. Asks the question, when? When shall I come to the healing waters? Lifting my heart, I cry to thee my prayer. Spirit of peace, comforter, healer, in whom my springs are found. Let my soul meet me there, meet thee there from a hill I know. Healing waters flow. So rise, Emmanuel's tide, and overflow my soul. We're just going to quietly lift up these words allowing these words to melt in with what I've just been talking about and God's light contrasting the darkness that you and I all have to deal with in our world and just allow him to wash, wash, wash over you together. When shall I come unto the healing waters lifting my heart i cry to thee my prayer spirit of peace my comforter and healer in whom my springs are found let my soul meet thee there from a hill i know healing waters flow oh rise emmanuel's tide and my soul overflow it's our soul that can be impacted, right? It, it's that the darkness that we deal with in our world and every day in our lives can, can actually impact our spiritual walk. So the writer says, wash from my hands the dust of earthly striving. I said it. Just walking around in this world, you're going to get the dust of this world on you. Take from my mind the stress of secret fear. You see how the author of the song is moving exactly where we were this morning. Cleanse the wounds that are hidden from everybody but you. If we, if we say we walk in the light, we're actually still walking in darkness. Let the waters flow over me and heal me. Let's sing this verse together. Wash from my hands the dust of earthly striving take from my mind the stress of secret fear cleanse thou the wounds from all but the far hidden and when the waters flow let my healing appear from a hill i know healing waters flow oh rise emmanuel's tide and my soul overflow now this is the verse that's going to appear light light life and love are in the fountain that he offers all i require to cleanse me and to restore me to ransom me to heal me to restore me to forgive me may it flow through my soul and redeem its dried up places and make a garden where the lord and i can meet from a hill i know let's sing this last verse together Light, life, and love are in that healing fountain. All I require to cleanse me and restore flow through my soul, redeem its desert places, and make a garden there for the Lord I adore. From a hill I know, healing waters flow. Tide and my 
Father, we live in a dark world. You've placed us there, though. We live in a time just like all time that it's been not a simple thing to follow you, but we follow. We follow. And Lord, you've placed us here in this world at this time as lights in a dark place. Always been dark. But Lord, as we walk in the light, as you are in the light, help us to understand something of the fellowship that we find ourselves in, the fellowship of the redeemed, the fellowship of those who have said yes to you, who have allowed your shed blood to cover us and to heal us and to forgive us of all sin and unrighteousness. Help us to understand what that means in these days and help us to live that life and that light in a dark world as lights on a hill that cannot be covered up. So Lord, we place ourselves in front of you today and ask that you would work in our hearts as we walk in fellowship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're looking for light songs to close, that's light songs about light, to close our service, and here it is, the one in the Salvation Army songbook that says, why should life seem like a weary journey? Well, it doesn't have to, because Jesus, Jesus is my light and song. Why should I, my cross, deem a burden? Well, we don't have to. Jesus is my light and song in the chorus, Jesus is my light. Jesus is my light. We're going to stand together, sing the closing song with the help of the band today. Life, a weary journey seem, Jesus is my light and song. Why should I my cross a burden deem, Jesus is my light and song. All the way is marked by love divine, round my path the rays of glory shine. Christ himself, companion is of mine, Jesus is my light and song. Jesus is my light, Jesus is my light, Jesus is my light and song. Jesus is my light, I'll serve him with my mind. Jesus is my light and song. What though foes on every hand I meet, Jesus is my light and song. What though snares are ready for my feet, Jesus is my light and song. Christ Jesus is my light and song. Jesus is my light, I'll serve him with my mind. Jesus is my light and song. So many of these beautiful songs in the songbook end with that onward looking, that place, our, our home in heaven. When my feet shall reach the open door, Jesus is my light and song. When life's pilgrimage on earth is over, Jesus is still my light and song. Let's sing the last verse and chorus together with the band. My feet shall reach the open door. Jesus is my light and song. My pilgrimage on earth is o'er. Jesus is my light and song.
is my light, Jesus is my light, Jesus is my light, and so on. Jesus is my light, I'll serve him with my might, Jesus is my light and song. Amen. It's been great to be with you today. Um, it is, uh, there's, there's nothing that really brings my heart more joy than to be in worship. And to be in worship with you uh, is, is pretty important to us. Uh, we're going to close our service as we do with this little chorus that we love to sing. Oh, Father. Let thy love remain. I love how the Trinity comes into play here. O oh, Son, may I be like you. Spirit, comfort me. Triune God, I give my praise to you. Let's uh, lift this up together.